Good morning. I welcome you here as we gather to worship God in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. As we prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist, let us recall our own sinfulness and ask God for his peace and mercy. You forgive our sins, Lord, have mercy. You heal our wounds, Christ, have mercy. You share with us the gifts of your spirit, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. Ever-living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. We pray this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. God said, let the water teem with an abundance of living creatures, and on the earth let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. And so it happened. God created the great sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the water teems, and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was, and God blessed them, saying, be fertile, multiply, and fill the waters of the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came and morning followed, the fifth day. Then God said, let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animals, all kinds of cattle, with all kinds of creeping things on the earth. God saw how good it was, then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the divine image, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant over all the earth, and every tree that has a seed-bearing fruit on it to be your food. And to all the animals of the land, and all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made, and he found it very good. Evening came, and morning followed, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed. Since on the seventh day God was finished with the work he had been doing, Thanks be to God. The response is, O Lord, our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. O Lord, our God, how wonderful your name on all the earth. When I behold your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you set in place, what is man that you should be mindful of him, or the son of man that you should care for him? O Lord, our God, how wonderful your name in all, all the earth. earth. You have made him little less than the angels and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him rule over the works of your hands, putting all things under his feet. O oh Lord, our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. All sheep and oxen, 
the birds of the air, the fishes of the sea, and whatever swims the paths of the seas. O oh Lord, Lord our God, God how wonderful your name in all the earth. The Lord be with you. Today's reading is from the Holy Gospel according to the tradition of St. Mark. When the Pharisees with some scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they observed that some of his disciples ate their meals with unclean, that is, unwashed hands. For the Pharisees, in fact all Jews, do not eat without carefully washing their hands, keeping the tradition of their elders. And on coming from the marketplace, they do not eat without purifying themselves. And there are many other things that they have traditionally observed, the purification of cups and jugs and kettles. And the Pharisees and scribes questioned him, why do your disciples not follow the tradition of the elders, but instead eat a meal with unclean hands? Jesus responded, well did Isaiah prophesy about you hypocrites. As it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines human precepts. You disregard God's commandment, but cling to your human traditions. He went on to say, how well you have set aside the commandment of God in order to uphold your traditions. For Moses said, honor your father and your mother, and whoever curses father or mother shall die. Yet you say, if someone says to father or mother, any support you might have had from me is korban, meaning dedicated to God, you allow him to do nothing more for his father or mother. You nullify the word of God in favor of your tradition that you've handed on. And you do many such things. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, as we open the first book of the Bible, the book of Genesis, uh, there are two creation accounts. Uh, actually, they come from two different traditions. One comes from a tradition called the Yahweh's tradition, the other from one called the Elohist tradition, both Hebraic traditions. But the one thing they're both agree on, as opposed to how, they're, how creation happened, and of course they're only able to imagine that, they don't have the kind of scientific knowledge we have today, or the, they had no sense of the dimensions of the universe and its unfolding. But they're symbolically, they want to indicate, first of all, that God's the creator. Secondly, that what God has created is good. But then the most critical thing that is said, um, and Debbie just proclaimed it at the end of the reading, is when uh, he, basically God is, creates us, men and women in his own image. And then, not only that, but then he gives to us all of this and asks us to shepherd it, to care for it, to manage it for the benefit of each other and also out of respect for the creativity that's evident in it from the creator itself. Of course, these people were speaking at those times when this, these words were to have been written, they would have been speaking uh, uh, close to 2,000 years before the birth of Christ and they were speaking to a world with very few people in it, not like the world we have today. Right now we're pushing over eight billion people on the planet, never been that many people here before. They were speaking to a world, well, completely almost unsettled given the numbers then. But that, that God created us in his own image, that requires a lot of meditation, or what I would call a deep dive into its significance and its meaning. If you and I are made in the image and likeness of God, uh, and that's what the author's proclaiming, and we believe he's a, he's a, he's a revealer, he's, he's giving us a revelation. Well, if that's the case, what is the image and likeness of God? Who is God? And we believe as Christians, 
The answer to that question is found in Jesus Christ. In other words, he's kind of the one who takes on our humanity and in so doing reveals also the divinity of God. And so we think of him now in our doctrine as human and divine. He has become the best of what we could ever be as a human being, and at the same time holds in his completeness the utter will of the Creator Father. And so we, we therefore, if we want to know what it means to live up to this image of being made in the image of likeness of God, we look at Christ. And that's why Paul, in every single epistle, in some form, says, put on Christ. In other words, recognize that if you're saying you want to be a Christian and follow Jesus Christ, you need to become him. You need to become him. In other words, and uh, so it doesn't matter what gender you are, it doesn't matter what nationality you are, it doesn't matter what race you are. If you're human, you have a potential to become like Christ. Now, if I were to kind of take, examine this differently, uh, it would seem as if we have not taken this seriously. I mean, uh, do we really believe that our fellow human beings are made in the image and likeness of God? Then why would we go to war with each other? Why would we enslave people? Why would we not respect the gift of life? Why would, we, why would we do so many things that reveal that we don't believe that the other person is the image and likeness of God? And unfortunately, when we behave that way, then we reveal neither are we. We're not that either. In other words, that's a potential that has to be actualized. And it has to be actualized in the same way Jesus did. And that is by being loving, caring, healing, just, faithful, etc. In other words, putting on those beatitudes uh, that Jesus reveals to us, realizing that there's nobody who's insignificant, not from a child in the womb uh, to the eldest person on the planet. Everybody should be respected, reverenced, valued, and seen actually as the greatest gift that we're inheriting when we're in creation. It's actually each other. So to relate to each other in that manner requires that we can't reduce each other to objects. We can't use, reduce each other to simply usage. And we certainly can't put a price on one another. We're supposed to be priceless and called into the community that is God's love and his presence. And so this is a tremendous affirmation of a, a radical truth for us as Christians, but at the same time, it's a truth that needs to be enfleshed, as Jesus did. In other words, there's a certain sense in which each of us is also involved in an incarnation. We are made human, but we are called for communion with God. And in so doing, we take on God's life, which the church simply references with a single word all the time, grace, grace. So it's, a, it's, an, it's an intriguing kind of reality. First of all, however, we have to also acknowledge that although Jesus is the revelation in, in essence of who God is, and has left us with the Father, this Holy Spirit, this inspiration for now making that reality our own, our, our, he's our advocate, our helper. In the midst of this, we have to also say at the same time as St. Thomas Aquinas did so often, and that is, there's a lot we still don't know. Because all language about God is analogical. And what that means is, it all comes from a comparison to gifts we have, which have to be kind of immensely uh, ex uh, exaggerated almost to get in touch with who God is. So when I ask you to be a loving person, you're gonna think about loving in ways, hopefully, that are sacrificial, uh, that value and reverence the person you love and others, but that's not enough. That's not enough. You have to be so completely loving that no one would be outside the ambience of your attention and your concern. So, and even then, you still would not be equal to what love means for the Creator. 
And he's actually even shared with you the power of being a creator yourselves. And so, but nonetheless, we will always be kind of reaching up, if you want, or out into the experience of God. And that's why even Aquinas says at the end of his great magnum opus, his, uh, his Theologica, he says, it's all dust. I've just touched the surface of who God is. And so, and so it would be with all the great scholars in our, in our particular Christian tradition. But also that's the way it is in the tradition of the great saints and the great prophets, etc. Nobody but, you know, if you want to hear somebody who really knows their personal sinfulness, read the saints. They all know they're sinners. And they're grateful that God has forgiven them their sinfulness always. And he's seeking for even a deeper communion with them. And they open themselves to that and thus usually reveal a, a holiness that transcends what most of us end up accomplishing. But we have to kind of, kind of remind ourselves we're engaged in this tremendous mystery of a communion with three divine persons, one God, who are calling us to in fact enter into their likeness as creator, as being redeeming people and, and redemptive people for each other, and in spirit, inspiring people for each other and breathing the life of God's presence into each other. And we're all gonna come up short. We're all gonna come up short. But that does not absolve us from the baptismal commitment to seek to reach the best place we can be. And it starts with this. It starts with this center, acknowledging the dignity, the value of every human person and respecting them. Um, the Sisters of St. Joseph, for whom I have Mass usually on every Monday, and sometimes on Sundays too, they've been involved in this past week in a novena. And the novena is for the Saint of Tomorrow. And uh, uh, the Saint of Tomorrow is uh, Sister Bakita, who is uh, from the present-day country of Sudan. And she was, as a little girl, she was sold into slavery. And then she was resold, and she was resold. Eventually, she ended up in the household of an Italian diplomat. And eventually, he, 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 she was inspired by his Catholicism and the way he was living it, despite the fact that he owned her as a slave, which was acceptable in those times, that uh, he freed her and allowed her to join a religious order. And she spent the rest of her life as a nun and seeking to do God's will and particularly for those who were enslaved. And, um, and she is the patron saint uh, today. We acknowledge her as the patron saint of, of uh, seeking an end to all kinds of forms of captivity of what is human. And especially today, the human beings are being traded on sex markets. That basically, we still have a world in which there are an innumerable number of people enslaved and simply used as objects and we're called, of course, to frustrate that and to change that in a variety of ways. So I could stand here and, and say to you for hours, you know, here's the evidence that you're not as human as you should be. I could sit here and describe all your and my inhuman activities. When we, we're not meeting the norm that was given to us in creation to reflect the very God who made us. But we need to be at that, always and everywhere. And not just for this particular person or this particular person, those are all important, but always even beyond that. And especially those who still suffer because their humanity is not being understood as something that should be reverenced instead of used or abused. And so there's a challenge for us. We hear too much, too often about the opposite. And we need, of course, to be something better than that. And I would challenge you as I would challenge myself each day to kind of be about that. As I said, I, I try to begin my prayer each day as soon as I get out of bed. And I try to end my night, every night, with the exact same words. Here am I, Lord. I come to do your will. That's why I'm here. In my particular role now, but in, in always, as are you, as are people who aren't even Christian, we're all made for that purpose. 
And ultimately, that ends in a communion with the God who made us and the delight and the experience of the fullness of life and love forever. I would just urge you to continue on that path, as I hope most of you are probably doing it well, but you continue to seek to, uh, to be the saints that God desires you to be. Let us stand now for our prayer of the faithful. First of all, today uh, we remember in prayer Father Robert McCartney, uh, for whom this Mass is a special remembrance. I knew Father Bob, he was a long time hospital chaplain in our diocese. For him, we pray to the Lord. Let us pray for the sick and the suffering, especially those who are so innocent and yet are so trampled upon and used in this world, but particularly the young. For them, we pray to the Lord. Let us pray for peace in a world where too often people seek to resolve their disagreements with violence and cruelty. For them, we pray to the Lord. Let us pray for the transformation of the minds and spirits of those who do not acknowledge the truth of the value and dignity of human life, that they may experience a conversion and then that conversion change their lives in order to better those of their fellow human beings. For this, we pray to the Lord. And now let us quietly bring to God our own special needs and intentions. For these, we pray to the Lord. Lord God, we thank you for having created us, each of us, and help us to be a gift to each other so that in our relationships with one another, we will give evidence of your continuing presence and of your spirit at work in us, always guided by the example you shared with us in Jesus, your son, who lives forever and ever. By this mingling of water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread and wine to offer. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, may they become one so that we might share the gift that they will be, Jesus the Christ. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite heart. Lord, wash away our iniquity and cleanse us of all our sin. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is being accomplished. We pray this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith, and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without end we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. And make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy and people of God. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her beloved spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Now at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with all of you. Please share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God.
My sisters and brothers, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart. We pray this through Christ our Lord. I would just also ask as we conclude that you keep in prayer a longtime parishioner here who died and whose funeral will be here tomorrow, Paula Robel. Uh, both Paula and her husband were very active here, both as lectors, Eucharistic ministers, and in fact her husband was the first uh, leader of our parish council. So continue, if you would, to think of Paula, especially tomorrow uh, when her family gathers uh, to uh, return her to the Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Glorify the Lord by your lives.
Thank mm-hmm. you.